No, it, it it hasn't. And it's not a very easy Sand King game here as well. You've got the Bloodseeker, you've got the Tiny, even the Crystal Maiden has some AoE spells, so you can't really push yourself to the limit with the... Oh my gosh, with the uh, Sand's term, the Arc Warden does come out for Fnatic, so... That is going to be farming up. Of course, that is more than likely just Raven playing it. He does excel in that hero. So there's our pause one. You've got a way of splitting the map up. You've got a way to overwhelm that living armor on the tree. You do not have the Venge in your side, but you don't need it. It's not fully necessary, especially if this game longs enough, goes long enough and you find a spell prism. I think that's a lot more balance for the Arkwind than, than the Venge Drow is. It's just a balance, Mike. Balance. Absolutely. The Arc Warden. Uh, I mean, there's nothing really to catch this Arc Warden out throughout this game yet either. Like, no. Mm. You've got the Sand King, so maybe once you have the Blink up, you can get a nice Barrow Strike off. But the Arc Warden, you know, they send the, Dem the Tempest Double in all the time. It's never really the real Arc Warden getting involved early on and... Even later on, of course, and that can make it very, very hard to catch the man out. So you'd hope, for 032's sake, that they go for a mid laner that can catch the Arc Warden whenever mm, it wants. Mm. Problem is, one of those mid laners being the Storm now has been removed. So you don't really have that option to go for. However, yeah. if I may, I could mm. possibly recommend an Earth Spirit pick for that mid matchup. I don't necessarily mm. like it into the Bloodseeker, because mm. obviously mm -hmm. it makes it so if you get ruptured, yeah. you can't do anything, but it does give you a way to deal with this Arc Warden. It does. Um, it gives you that solid combination on top of it. I think... I'm not looking at the Spirit Brothers. Uh, I think Void Spirit and Earth Spirit are just not that good in this particular lineup, although there is the potency, as you mentioned. There is a bit more value in something like the Puck to give you that Dream Coil. It's also very mobile... Doesn't care too much for Rupture at max range. I believe at the full range of your Illusory Orb, you're just outside of proc range of Rupture. So you can play with that. And you naturally build a Yule. So that's something you can use to dodge that silence coming out as well on the blood. Um, do like the ban out here from Zero Tree Tudo, taking out the Zeus. We haven't seen the blood Zeus in a while. It's just been consistently taken off the table. Missing that opportunity to watch that burst. I'm kind of saddened by it. I think it is fair, though. Like, it's a pretty potent mm. combination. I, I don't is. quite blame Zero Three Two for getting rid of it. Uh, and last pickups now. Fnatic, one more. They've got 15 seconds left. They want to finish off with. Still that mid laner oh. they're lacking. What is it, John? Oh, Mike, I was just, I was just checking, checking chat, Micah. They're asking again if it's the same shirt. <laughs> Are they kidding? <laughs> Yeah, they're asking. Is it is that the same sh same shirt again, Mike? <laughs> oh, it's just love. They're just banting with you. They're just banting. Oh. They're calling out my room too. They like my room. I I try to keep it neat. You know, I try to show the Pokeballs if you guys see. There's a Sims stream mug as well. You know, just uh, showing off, showing uh, off my childhood. Just because I'm wearing another blue shirt doesn't mean it's the <laughs> same shirt. It's it's different patterns, dude. Yeah. These are. <laughs> you know what, next I game... I think people just don't believe it, man. I might just bring out a bunch of shirts and show them the difference. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> SF is going to be the final pickup here for 0 3 2. Mm. Uh, so there you have it. You've got the SF out now. Woo! This um, be a lot of Mike, fun. Yeah? You see what I'm seeing? What is Moon Pangolier down mid. You know, Pango mid. It, it brings back some tots from Australia, Mike. Taking me <laughs> back down under... <laughs> If he's watching, uh, was it Buzzkin it or Bala? It, if Buzzkin's watching, he's got to watch Moon here. Still, Zero Tree 2 also close out with the Shadow Fiend. So you've got the this beautiful team fight combo. Overgrowth plus uh, Requiem is pretty nice with the Fear playing in with the Sand King ult. It's a lot to land on, though. But this is another hero that does love the aura from the Venge and the Drow. So it's tying it up pretty well for Zero Tree 2. Fnatic, straightforward. All of their cores are sacrificial except Raven. They're going to buy space for that pause one Arc Warden and try to stall it out until it's ready to go, until it's perfectly balanced. Maybe you hope for a Spell Prism. Maybe you hope for a Telescope Drop. <laughs> and once you have that, it lines up, Mike. I love balance, John. Balance always feels very, very good. Well, let's get into it. Fnatic vs. 032. Game number one with the new lineup of Fnatic. See if this one is a, a bit more successful than the last. Yeah, it's a, it's a fresh start, right? Sort of fresh. They've got 4F back. 
They've got Sefer hammered in on support. DJ also hammered in onto support for. We saw some flexing with him on the off lane with AU around and looks like there. This is a bit more standard. You know, I, I feel like this lineup should find more success. They do gel well enough together. And they've played with Sefer for a while now. You don't have the wild card factor of AU in his tryouts. So it, we'll see. I think this is a test for in game leadership now. Who exactly starts calling the shots? And, you know, Fnatic, they're investing in this team. You know, they, they mentioned it on their announcement, but they want to take it slow. They don't mind a short term loss. So, this is, regardless of how it goes, it's an opportunity for them to grow. Of course, you'd still love to win 0 3 2. You know, it's time for them to start racking it in. We, we've, saw, we've seen them with some potential. Those same issues I talked about for Fnatic shouldn't be bothering them as much. And we'll see if that truly is the case. Absolutely. <laughs> Nico. We'll get into it. Game number one. We'll bring up some uh, some betting odds here from Loopbet. Fnatic actually uh, favored in this matchup, interestingly enough. Hmm. $1.40 to two eighty for zero three two, which I can honestly say I was not expecting. Uh, I do have a bit more confidence in this squad with Forever in the offlane, if I'm yeah. honest, but... I don't know about that. 0-3-2, they haven't looked that bad. I mean, again, they, they are above in terms of points for the group stage, so... See how this one pans out. Yeah, um... I, it, it's so strange because they have had drawn series, right? Like, so there are at least some wins under the belt of 0 3 2. We'll see if those odds are right. We'll find out soon. You, do you see a slight clump up already? Yeah, Moon's gonna get chased down a bit by Ninja Boogie and does eventually just leave him alone. Moon will run back to the mid lane. It's gonna be pretty important for Moon to have a good game on this Pangolier, John, as you do need him to set the mm. tempo so Raven can get the space to become a very balanced late game Arc Warden. Uh, if he does not do that, well, with the draft of 032, they are probably going to be able to run over you. Uh, it is a Drow SF after all, and even the Venge on top of that can make it very, very hard uh, to get back into the game because this kind of draft from 032, they don't, they don't like to hold out too long, right? It does get kind mm. of explosive if they do get the good start going. Yeah, definitely, and. Well, the mid lane for Moon, of course, against that SF is mentioned. We'll see how it unfolds. Uh, Pango mid, not the most common, but also not, not the strangest thing. Uh, initial levels are going to be a bit rough. I think you'd feel comfiest at level 4, really, when you've got level 2 in your swash and maybe 1-1 one, one as well. So you've got some tankiness with the shield crash. But Nico, for his part, it's all about the last hits. And when Moon does swash like that, well, you can let off some ra raises and start to punish a bit. That's the thing, right? You've got to get those swashbuckles out to secure the range creep. But of course, Nico should be able to capitalize. Of course, Nico on the SF, he's had a few issues in the mid lane from the games we've been seeing. It's uh, been a bit of a mixed performance from him. Of course, he is a bit newer to these kind of higher tier tournaments. So there is, uh, there is time for him to, to get used to it. Of course, I'm sure there's a bit of pressure for him, as you do tend to get mm. for the newer players. But... As time goes on, I'm sure we'll see him uh, displaying a lot of his uh, his good performances. Yeah, it's uh, a lot of pressure there on the supports for that SF to find that bounty rune. And speaking of the supports up top, you do have DJ slapping Ninja Bogey a bit, but it's the lane of the Drow Venge. And of course, you do have the Bloodseeker actually being the one aggressive. So you can see 4 not minding the creep wave, opting instead to get some good harassment in. Absolutely. Forev is doing a great job. Look at this. He just pushes the wave, but he's going to contest. So Natsumi can't have a free time here. And this is the strength of the Bloodseeker. And if I'm quite frank, John, we've seen a lot of offlane Bloodseeker that haven't really been doing this. But I'd love to see mm. the fact that Forev just comes back into Fnatic and is making it very, very hard for the safe lane of, of 032 to actually get some farming. <laughs> yeah, and the, you're going to have your stable EXP gain here. You're forcing the Drow to hit under tower, which is never fun without attack animation. It's it's the way the offlane blood's supposed to be played. So forever, he's going to have an easy ramp up to level 3. This is also giving DJ a ton of space now. He gets to go down mid. He does. Nico. He's going to get Avalanche tossed, and that should be a nice, easy kill. DJ to take it, but now Moon going to cop a few T1 tower hits. 
but ultimately will be safe. Uh, he does have his bottle up anyway, and a tango active, so he'll just heal up the old-fashioned way. But that's a great rotation out from DJ. Yeah, and that's just because of the space that 4Ev can buy. So when you have a offlaner that can buy that space for himself, you get so much more done as a pause. For really good punishment onto Nico. We talked about the SF. It's such a snowball-based hero, so he's going to have to recover in that lane. You look down, bot. Of course, you've got Bach and the Sand King this time around up against Raven and Sephir and that CM Arc Warden. He's got Hold on, John Matthew DJ. around to help him. Oh. Top lane, he's copying a lot of damage, but does eventually get the toss off on Ninja Boogie. I apologize, John. You were saying the bot lane. Yeah, no, it's just it's a standard lane. You can see Bach is not doing so hot. He did go for 1-1-1 one, one, one in his skill build. It's just so hard to really fully contest an Arc Warden. Especially when you've got Sephir just getting some pull-offs as well. Uh -oh. You do get the punishment. Yeah, Box in trouble. Yeah, he's going to try for the TB, but will not make it out. There was no chance of him running, of course, because the Flux would have started dealing damage and slowed him again. And, well, he tried, but he does end up paying for it. And well, with that TP down now, John, he's going to have to make the walk of shame back into the lane. It's never a good time as a Sand King. You just want to be able to farm a lane out. Some contestion over the ruins, but Zephyr... Actually going to go down. I'm looking at top lane, though, where Forever is being slowed up. But DJ is going to be there to stop him. And Ninja Boogie... Oh, I thought DJ was going to go for the toss back. He doesn't. That may have been the better option anyway, as Forever was salving up. So you may have just cancelled the salve. But, John, with this pressure that Forever's put on this top lane, mm. they've been forced to get a tri lane going. So Matthew's rotated up. They're going to commit to try and kill off this Bloodseeker now. Matthew, he'll get the Nature's Grasp off, but Forever is going to be okay. And I'm really giving props to this man because he's doing just so much work for Fnatic right now. As you can see, oh. Nico goes down mid lane because DJ doesn't have to be there to babysit this Bloodseeker. And that's what you'd love to see when you've got this self-reliant offlane. Opens up so many possibilities. You take a look at Moon now. He's level 6 already. A full level above that SF. And that's just not what you want to see now if you're 0 3 2. When you have that SF, you need the fast 6. You need the fast kills in that hero. And to make matters worse, if you, if you look at Bach, his progress in the Sand King has still sort of stalled out. His last hits are not up there. He's going to need to play in the jungle. That means... Your Drow is going to be sharing that space out with a lot of heroes. It is definitely going to be so. Natsumi still struggling with CS. About 10 behind the Ark Warden. Rev just working towards that Veil of Discord to make matters worse for 0 3 2. Of course, with this SF dying multiple times now, it's, it's going to be tough for 0 3 2 in the mid game as this game goes on. You are just not getting enough farm to be able to contest 10 minutes after this this, uh, this stage of the game as they are going to make a jump now onto Ninja Boogie. Once again, just another easy kill for Moon to take. And they can start getting some pressure onto that T1 mid tower with the Siege Creep. Yeah, and this is, this is what Zero Tree 2 is supposed to do, right? They've got the Venture out. You'd expect them to start chipping away at towers, but they just can't. They don't have the space and an invasion in the jungle even. Look at this. Nico, he's forced to use the Requiem. Will cancel, but Moon, he's threatening to use that Rolling Thunder. Now the Requiem going to be cancelled by DJ, and he's not going to be able to get it off. Moon's just going to keep him perma-stunned up now. And Nico, yeah, he just can't get away with this. Ninja Boogie does TP in to try and help, but I would not recommend it. They are not going to be able to catch anyone anyway. Moon, he's still dancing around here with another swashbuckle up very, very soon. He is feeling confident, and Bok may be regretting TPing up now as the avalanche comes through, and that'll be another kill out to this Pangolier. And Ninja Boogie is probably not going to be safe either, as there is going to be another swashbuckle out, and that's going to be the fourth hero dead up at this top lane. Oh boy, Fnatic, they're showing up today. So you can see that roster change really. Helping them find their pace once more. 0 3 2. They've got to reel it in. Bach is not ready to show up anywhere else. He needs to build that steady farm. You need so much more as well in your SF. The only lane that's gone anywhere remotely well is Natsumi's, but he is still lagging about 500 gold behind the other cores on Fnatic. They've left Raven alone in the Arc Warden. We've seen this happen to Gabby, where he was just left alone. He's got his Midas up. If you don't start pressuring the Arc Warden, well, 
you'll, you're gonna get what you ask for. Like, it's gonna overtake you and you've got to be careful about that timing. Well, they've got a choice right now, 0 It's either you take out Raven or you protect Natsumi. Because Natsumi is still having a very, very poor time on this drow, thanks to Ferrer. And now he's got the Rob shot. He's going to throw it out, keep him just stabilized as DJ going to move in with a toss in and an avalanche. And Natsumi still in danger, going to cop a Crystal Nova now. And he's, gonna, he's just going to have to TP back to Fount. It's, ah. it's just going to slow things down so much more, John. And it's the brilliance of this Bloodseeker. In fact, now... Just forcing out the tree and protector, they can go after this T1 top tower. And this also stalls out the progression of her treant as well. Level one living armor, and that's not gonna stop any sort of push attempt here from Fnatic. So they're gonna have to settle with that. They're gonna try to shove the bot. You do have Bach and Nico shoving together, but they're gonna have to trade. That's the best they're gonna hope for. This is not what you want when you have a tree and protector vote. Like, you don't want to lose no. towers like this. No. Even, even an even trade. You want these things to be alive at the 20-minute mark. That's the point where you feel comfy, where you've done your job. But Matthew's just... He's doing his best. It, it's just not enough. You do lose the top one eventually. They're going to drop the bot, tier 1, on the side of 0 3 two. Even trade. But that's not what you want in the tree and trap. And Fnatic, 4k lead now, Mike. Sub 10 minutes in. That's a big gap for 0-3-2 to have to overcome. They just can't do anything. DJ and Moon are going to rotate down the mid lane now where Natsumi is trying to get a kill off onto Zephyr, but he can't even kill the CM yet. He's going to keep chasing him down. No, no the rain drop's going to save him, but it's it's board time, Moon. He's going to roll in. DJ will finish the kill off onto the Drow, and now Moon will also get Ninja Boogie, but they're going to try and fight back here. Moon going for the TP. He is going to get Requiemed and does go down to Matthew. Forever. Trying to sneak up from behind. He didn't quite make it in time. Obviously, still going to be a positive trade, however, John. You did get the Drow. And without this Drow farming, without this SF farming, you're not going to have a mid game. No. No, you definitely aren't. You can see Nico. He is going for the Yule's build on the SF. So they're just going to build around the Yule's blow up, but for it. He's playing very confidently here for Ev on this Bloodseeker. Gonna get epicentered now. I wonder if he can get himself out of this one. It doesn't look like it. Bok, with the haste rune, does finally pick off this menace. That'll make uh, that'll make him feel a, a little bit safer across this map, at least for the next 20 seconds. Yeah, he's working towards that blink on the Sand King. Blink first, so they're gonna have options to engage. Very important for Zero Tree Two if they want to bounce back in. That'll allow them to find some openings for. Fanatic and potentially even punish Raven. So right, so the blink tanking is going to help out massively. They just need to ensure that Box not gonna drop while farming it. He just needs to safely farm it up, keep him secure, but you can see Fanatic, they've already smoked up here. I mean they've they've got a great peak going right now. Ninja Boogie is gonna run into them. So at least you're only losing the position five, four zero three two. That's probably the best case scenario for zero three two, apart from just not getting ganked. And with that kill, they're going to head off back towards that mid-T1 tower. And again, as a tree and protector, you never want to let this go down. But uh, Matthew, he's going to lose his courier now. Moon knows exactly where they are. And they are going to get that tree in very, very low. So they are going to commit to that fight very, very soon. As Rolling Thunder, Moon's going to go through, connects with the tree in. Bok, going to be a bit careful here as DJ gets the avalanche toss. And that Nova going all the way. Moon needs to find his way out of this one. We'll get out. They don't quite get the tier 1 tower they wanted, but they do get a 1 for 1, a position 4 for a position 3, and the, uh, of course, the Venge before that. They'll happily back off. And John, you pointed this out, but look at Raven. He's, uh, he's got mm. the Maelstrom up now. Maelstrom... Um, Maelstrom Midas at 12 minutes. That's a lot of farm. And it's just free farm. He said 6.9k, Mike, at 12 minutes in. There's just been no contestion, no punishment for him. Fnatic have been very disciplined with the space they've bought out. Now you've got a mech up on Moon, so he can he can start to sustain his team. He only has to javelin for offense, but 
you don't need that much more, considering just how squishy Zero Tree 2 is right now. The mech's gonna allow Fnatic to maintain that aggression, and Zero Tree 2, they've still got a little bit more in the tank. There, There is that blink on Bok. So again, they're gonna rely on the Sand King to set up for them with some kill opportunities. The Yules for Nico almost done. Uh, just about to get the staff and then about 600 gold off for the recipe. Those big, those items will allow them to take some team fights, but it has to come out fast. <laughs> Moon's being very frustrating here, taking all of Box creeps. Box just being able to finally pick up that blink dagger that his team has desperately needed off him. Not too badly timed either, mind you, considering the circumstances mm. for Bok. Uh, but of course, he had to go literally tranquils into blink. So, uh, no real core items in between. They are picking out that mid T1 again. Do they want to go for the fight or do they want to commit for the tower? So they want to get a pick off first and they might spot out Bok here just behind the tree line. Bok going for an epicenter oh. into a burrow strike and he does catch out two of them. Zeph is in trouble but he's not going to die. He pops the ultimate, lets it go. And well, the side of Fnatic are looking pretty healthy in this team fight. Natsumi being chased down now by Ferev. He'll get the blood right out. Natsumi could not run out in time. He will oh. go down and the toss back into the blood right. And that's a full team wipe. Oh man, I mean, you can't even kill off the CM. A valiant attempt from Bok, but he needs his team to back him up. They need the overgrowth to come out. They need, they need the Requiem actually channeled to give them that damage. And when it doesn't line up, it still falls apart. Fnatic, 9k lead. They're stealing some big stacks here as well. Tier 3 2. Uh, they, they're really starting to bleed out way too hard. 9k advantage, 16 to 5. Uh, Natsumi, I mean, he's got the Yasha. He needs that BKB, but even then, they need so many of these fights to just line up. Moon's gonna go in onto Bok. Sandstorm will be out. DJ, he'll jump in with an avalanche. Natsumi's trying to fight, but forever. He already got rid of Ninja Boogie in the back lines. The Raven just sending in that Tempest Stubble. Being a real nuisance here. And they are still looking for Bok. They have him underneath the sentry now, and with that Bok, he is gonna die. The torture continues for 0 3 2. It's an 11k net worth lead. Yeah, things are looking very very, very dark here for this dire side. You look at DJ John, he's got that blink up, he's looking at Matthew, oh. and he's gonna be able to find him. Avalanche toss and a blood right, and Ferev will get another pick off for himself. Oh, this game is, it's looking real bad. I, I can only imagine what Dota Plus is thinking, and we're already at 93%. It's a quick one, but you know, it's to be expected. I mean, we, we don't even talk about Raven anymore. He's got the Mjolnir up and running. He does have a keen optic, so not quite a telescope, but they've left him alone. Even if you start winning these fights, you have to wonder, is that enough to overcome this grab gap Raven's built? He's the 10k net worth. Oh, fuck. Oh. Epicenter Burrow is going to be out on Raven, but do they have the damage up? Well, he's just tankier than you'd expect, but no, they are going to have it. Great setup there from Bok, getting rid of that Poswan Arc Warden. But now the rest of Fnatic going to go back in. They'll get Ninja Boogie. Not quite the trade you'd want, but the one they have to accept, and I think 0-3-2 should be very, very happy with that kill onto Raven. Yeah, it's a big one. Not quite the network swing you would expect, but you find that key target we've t we were talking about. You do manage to stall the Arc Warden just a bit. Give yourself a catch-up opportunity. It's still dire to Mike. You look at the network chart. Natsumi's behind DJ. Every single core is behind DJ. The pause oh. for a fanatic. It's that bad. It, it really is. Yeah, it's uh... I wonder what the hero levels look like. Oh, that's a yikes. Yeah, four yeah. heroes on top from fanatics into things and everyone else on uh, on 0-3-2 are level 12 and below. Uh, very, very tough time. There'll be a smoke out 0-3-2. Now, mind you, if they win a team fight, they'll get all those levels back pretty fast. 
Only problem is, Smoke was broken, but Moon has been caught out by the Burrow. He's going to look for a Rolling Thunder back into Bop. In fact, never mind that. He'll go after Nico. The Requiem was used, but Moon, he's got a great angle here. Onto Matthew, onto Nico. It looks like Matthew is going to be the first target. Nico is literally stuck in a corner and can knock it out. And Ferev, he's taking care of the back lines. He's got Natsumi, and Natsumi is going to die to DJ. As Ninja Boogie, the only thing he could do was just TP up, and that's what he does do. Tower is under the gap is just growing. That was a beautiful smoke break coming out from DJ, just standing on the ramp. And I get that 032 are desperate for opportunities, but that's not how you find them. 15k behind, Roche now being melted by Fnatic. They're gonna have to reel it in together. I think at this point, you start looking at the high ground and think, all right, that's where we can really play well. They have overgrowth. We have Burrow Strike, we have Epicent, we have Requiem. The high ground is a strong point for this lineup. Just, you have to seed ground here. D there is no way you can fight outside unless you get that pick off like we saw a while ago. When it comes to a 5v5, with how far ahead these heroes are, it's so difficult. To find DJ's place. got the Avalanche Toss with the Blood Rage. Bok, he's gonna fall quite low, but gets the Sandstorm off, but they have the Dust. Forever wants to have a look for this, but Bok is out of there. Nice little escape from our Sand King. But the push will continue, John. That T2 tower is not going to last. No. It, it's just going to melt. I mean, the Raven's ready to go now. He's got the travel so you can be all across the map. Of course, they're going to have a lot of time left in the fresh ages. So there's not as much pressure for Raven to play it safe. And 0-3-2 now. I mean, there's, they're still playing catch up, but it's just not safe anywhere. He's got to be careful. Moon's got a double damage at him. Like he won't be able to commit it. Of course, there is zero rush for Fnatic as you do have the Arc Warden late game. Uh, they really don't have any kind of pressure mm. on themselves to try and finish this game. Uh, Raven's essentially got infinite scaling. And I do mean infinite. But, uh, yep. <laughs> kind of <laughs> ridiculous how far he can go with this hero. There's your tier 2 mid tower, just slowly being chipped away up by Forever and Raven. The uh, living armor's gonna make it a little bit tougher and there's your backdoor protection kicking in, but Raven's not gonna be dissuaded. He has the blood rage and that'll help him get it just a little bit faster. He does get it in the end. Yeah, I mean, like, right now 0 2 is just playing the right way. Giving out those outer towers, uh, trying to buy space. You sacrifice Matthew, but there is some space down. But you can see Natsumi farming it safely. Nico as well. And that's the best you can hope for. Just trying to buy some breeding room. Hoping that the high ground push will end up better for you. And just trying to recover. Nico, you might try to go for something down at this bot lane. Nico is a very, very sad SF. 6k net worth. Uh, it's been a while since I've seen a net worth that low on an SF mid. Mid lane. Oh, they've caught out Bok. Rupture out. Forever's going to get it in time. <laughs> oh, that's a shame. Forever, he's having a good time. Meanwhile, Moon going to jump on to Natsumi. And this Drow Ranger probably not going to go anywhere. They'll swap him out. Still, it's looking okay now. They might be able to turn with the Overgrowth and the Requiem. Even the Meteor Hammer to drop. So, DJ does fall and Moon is getting low. But he will Guardian Griefs and now Forev getting swapped back in. We'll just say thank you very much as he rushes forward onto Natsumi. And now Nico is going to be in a spot of danger and does die to Raven. Now, Race Car is just flying now after Matthew, but... We'll let it go as... Well, they don't... Yeah, GG. They've had it. Ooh. Oh, boy. 21 Fnatic. minutes. They're back. It, they're it back. looks like they're back. Um, uh, zero, three, two. They tried to go early with Avengero. I don't think you want to first phase it. Like, every time we've seen it first phase like that, it hasn't really worked out. So maybe reconsider the draft. I don't think that was... I mean... It was mainly a drafting error. I, I really feel that way. The matchups weren't ideal. Uh, don't open with Venge Drow. I think you have to be surprising with that. But when you do open with Venge anyway, the, op the opposing team can read that. So a bit... Uh, Got to take care in that drafting. Fnatic, 
and they're looking like they're back, Mike. They're, they are in a fantastic form. Let's see if they can keep it up for game two. We'll see. Oh, I, I'm curious as well, John. What do you think the main difference was in this game? Like, just based off what we were seeing from the past few days from Fnatic, because this is the first game they've won mm -hmm. in the group stage. What, yeah. what do you think the main difference was? Uh, there are two, in my opinion. Uh, they've got an actual shot caller, so I feel like Forev's there to reel in where they go, where they run, what to do every single time. And they're giving Moon heroes. He doesn't need to farm it. He can dominate lanes, and he can just start playing level 6 onward. That's exactly how Moon plays. He's an enabler mid. He's not a hard carry mid. You have to give the guy something he can shine in early. The Pango shows up here. And if they keep that drafting style up for Moon, if they keep... You know, having that good communication coming out here with Forev back, there's some there's some uh, good potential here from Fnatic. I think it really helped that top lane as well because Forev dominated mm. the lane so hard that DJ could rotate mid, set the lane up for Moon by killing the SF twice, and mm. and then it was just a free game after that because you couldn't focus down Raven anymore because there was just too much pressure across the map. Uh, so I, I'd yeah. love the changes I'm seeing right now from this team. And let's see if they can replicate this performance in game two. Uh, it's MLP Dota and Dronix Fire. We'll be back in about 10 minutes for that second game.